Namo Buddhaya. When we learn the Buddha's teachings, we learn actually the truth about reality, the truth about our lives. It's not something that we need to blindly believe in, the Buddha's teachings. Why? Because the Buddha's teachings are ehipasiko. We should come and see and investigate them for ourselves. We should examine the Buddha's teachings and see if they're really true or not. Buddha's teachings are not a dogma that we should have blind faith in. But we should try and learn the Buddha's teachings and actually think for ourselves. There's a wonderful independence in Buddhism. We should think for ourselves whether these teachings are actually true or not. Are they relevant to my life? When I practice them and try to implement them in my life, do I become happier, more peaceful or not? If what I'm teaching you from the Buddha's Dhamma, from Buddhism, doesn't lead to your happiness and peace, you don't need to practice it. It's up to you to see for yourself. A person who likes the truth, who respects the truth, doesn't hide from the truth. They willingly accept the truth, even if it's bitter. And indeed, sometimes the truth can be bitter. In the Buddha's teachings, the Buddha teaches four divine messengers that we can see in our lives. These messengers in our lives are telling us to wake up to reality. That is, there is a truth, a stark reality facing us in this life and we need to see it and understand it. And then we should try to adjust our lives according to reality. We shouldn't try to hide from the truth. We need to accept the truth. Once we accept the truth, then we can adjust our lives to the truth. And we can try to realize the Supreme Truth, Four Noble Truths. So the Buddha taught, in our lives, in this human world, we see four divine messengers, a newborn child. A newborn child is born into this world according to their karma. What goes around comes around. People in this world, some are born rich very wealthy families. Some are born extremely poor, don't even have enough food to eat, enough clothing to wear, while others live in a huge mansion, maybe have several cars. Some people are born intelligent. Some people are born stupid. Some people are born beautiful. Some you don't want to take a second look at. Some people are born with a high social status, born into a royal family maybe. Some people are born as outcasts in society. People are born according to their actions. And we too were born into this world as a helpless child. Little by little we grew up, but when we see a newborn child, this is a message of reality. We need to understand, I too am born according to my karma. We weren't born in this world because we wanted to be. 
Whether we wanted to be born or not, we are born in this world according to our karma. And whatever karma we do, good or bad, in this life, will affect our next life. So seeing this message of reality, a newborn child, we need to reflect about our own life. We too will be born according to our actions, good and bad. People in this world experience happiness and suffering according to their good and bad karma. So we should be very careful about the karma we do. We should try to avoid bad karma and do good karma. Second message of reality that the Buddha teaches is an old person. And we've probably all seen someone 80, 90 years old, maybe our grandparents, body very weak, wrinkled skin, gray hair, lost their eyesight, their sense, their hearing, sense of smell, taste, can't stand up without someone else's help, walking with a cane, bent over, Now, they are not the only person who will grow old. We too will grow old like that someday. We too cannot escape from old age. So seeing that, we should wake up to reality and see the truth of this life and do good deeds as much as possible. Be diligent in doing good deeds. The third divine messenger that appears in the human world is someone who has completed their lifespan, a dead body. All of our relatives one day will pass away, right? Not only our relatives, but everyone else's relatives. Everyone will pass away one day. Everyone will eventually die. Not only others, but we too, one day, have to leave everything. All of our loved ones, all of our possessions, we have to leave everything and move on, according to our karma. Understanding this, this reality, this is the truth, right? No one can... Hmm, argue against this. This is the truth of our life. We eventually have to die one day. And before that happens, we should be diligent in doing good deeds by body, speech, and mind. We should practice generosity. We should try to purify our virtue, practice moral conduct and develop a mind of loving-kindness to create good karma that leads to our happiness in the future. The fourth divine messenger, a messenger telling us to wake up to reality, is a criminal. Now in this world, many types of criminals exist, and depending on the type of crime they commit, they have to experience different sorts of punishments, right? And it can vary depending on country. Once I was in an airport in a certain country, and I saw that someone who engages in drug trafficking would be killed. The government in that country will kill the criminal who engages in drug trafficking. In some countries, depending on the crime, you can get a sentence of life in prison because of some bad deed. So the wise person, the Buddha's disciple, thinks about this, that criminals in this life, after they do bad deeds, experience all sorts of punishments and suffering because of the wrong actions they did. 
they experience this kind of suffering in this life, then what about the next life? How a wise person thinks. We should reflect on these four messengers of reality, a newborn child, an elderly person, a dead person, and a criminal who's experiencing punishment. And we should wake up to reality and understand the truth of this life. Otherwise, if we're heedless and spend our entire lives running after money, pleasures, possessions, after we grow old and are lying on our deathbed, our final moments, we can experience a lot of regret. Regret that we were unable to do good deeds in this life. If we get caught up in sensual pleasures, that's what can happen to us. So we should understand the truth of this life. These four messengers are actually the Buddha's teaching us about the noble truth of suffering. Now some people may criticize the Buddha's teachings, always talking about suffering, but actually the Buddha's teachings are not pessimistic. The Buddha taught four noble truths. The noble truth of suffering, that that suffering has a cause. When that cause is removed, all suffering is removed. That's perfect happiness. And there's a way to remove all the pain, suffering, and unhappiness in our lives and to achieve perfect, lasting happiness. That's the Noble Eightfold Path, the Fourth Noble Truth. Only the person who can understand the truth of this life, who can see actually that this suffering is present in our own lives, a person who doesn't hide from it, but who accepts that it exists, that person, he or she, has the opportunity to become free from suffering. But to do that, we need to be diligent in doing wholesome deeds. That's why the Buddha taught that we should often reflect on these facts of life. We should often reflect every day that I am growing old. I will become very old one day. I will fall sick one day, maybe get a terminal illness cancer, heart disease. That's the nature of my life. I will die one day. I have to leave everything and pass on. That's the truth. That's the reality. We should wake up to that reality. We will one day be separated from everyone and everything that is dear to us. And we are the owners of our karma. Whatever good or bad karma we do, we will have to experience the results in that. By thinking in this way, by thinking about the truth of this life in this way, we have the chance to realize the supreme truth, that supreme happiness of nirvana. Namo Buddhaya.